A decade ago in Australia, you could walk into a Hyundai dealership and drive away in a brand new Elantra for 20,000 Australian dollars, around $13,300. While those days are now behind us, the facelift 2024 i30 sedan still offers excellent value, especially in the inline variant, which stands out as particularly appealing. The current generation i30 sedan has been on the Australian market since early 2021. Although it's essentially the same vehicle as the Elantra sold in other countries, it's been rebranded in Australia, likely because the i30 name is more familiar to local buyers. When we first drove it in 2021, we were thoroughly impressed, and after spending a week with the 2024 model, we'd confidently recommend it to anyone seeking a budget-friendly sedan. A sedan for every budget. The updated i30 sedan range starts at 29,000 Australian dollars, approximately $19,300, for the base model with a 2.0-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, or 33,000 Australian dollars, about $22,000, for the new 1.6-liter turbocharged hybrid. The range continues with the i30 sedan Elite, priced from 33,500 Australian dollars, dollar 22, 300, for the 2.0-liter and 38,500 Australian dollars, dollar 25, 600, for the i30 sedan premium. Sitting between these models is the 36,000 Australian dollars, dollar 24, i30 sedan inline, which we recently had the pleasure of driving. For those willing to spend a bit more, the i30 sedan inline premium is available for 41,500 Australian dollars, dollar 27, 600. This is the top model in the standard range, just below the high-performance 52,000 Australian dollars, dollar 34, 600, i30 sedan in premium, one of the best hot sedans in its price category. The changes made to the 2024 model are mostly cosmetic, focusing on the exterior. The front end now features slimmer, more attractive headlights, and an LED light bar that stretches between them. The front bumper has been redesigned with a slightly more aggressive look, and Hyundai's new flat badge is prominently displayed up front. A comfortable and upscale interior. The interior of the 2024 i30 sedan hasn't seen many changes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. When I first drove the earlier version of the i30 sedan, I was impressed by the cabin's build quality and finish, especially given its starting price. The same holds true for the current model. The seats from the previous model have been carried over, offering good bolstering and a soft, comfortable feel. However, the angle of the seat bases doesn't provide much underthigh support for taller drivers. When I was behind the wheel, my thighs barely touched the seat bases. The only way to rest my thighs on the seats was by stretching my legs behind the pedals, which isn't safe. In front of the driver, there's an in-branded steering wheel wrapped in black leather with red contrast stitching. It's equipped with plenty of physical buttons and switches for cruise control and media settings, along with a large digital instrument cluster. Our test car was the entry-level inline, not the inline premium, so it came with an 8.0-inch infotainment display instead of the 10.25-inch screen found in higher trims. This display supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but runs an outdated version of Hyundai software, lacking many features and settings found in other models from the brand. It's one of the most basic infotainment systems we've encountered in recent years, and it left us disappointed. Aside from the thigh support issue, the driving position is excellent, with ample headroom for taller front seat passengers. The rear seats are a bit more cramped compared to the Mazda 3 sedan we tested recently, but they offer plenty of space for kids and teens, provided they don't have large feet. The 2024 model also comes with a pair of USB-C ports in the rear. The quality of the materials used in the i30 sedan's cabin doesn't feel quite as nice as those of the Mazda 3 sedan, but this car's Japanese rival starts at almost 2,000 Australian dollars, dollar one, 300, more and tops out at 47,147 Australian dollars, dollar 31, 300, not far off the performance-focused i30N sedan. Where the i30 sedan has the Mazda 3 beat is in luggage space, as the boot can swallow up 474 liters, 16.7 cubic feet, 30 liters, 1 cubic foot, more than the Mazda. The Hyundai also has a slightly larger aperture and lower loading point, making it easier to load things in and out. A comfortable ride but an unrefined powertrain. Power comes courtesy of a 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder. This engine is good for 150 kilowatts, 
201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 265 Newton meters, 195 lbfd of torque between 1,500 RPM and 4,500 RPM figures identical to the pre-facelift model. Coupled with this engine is a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission driving the front wheels. I was pleasantly surprised with how much punch the inline provides. It has slightly more grunt than the 139 kilowatts, 186 horsepower, and 252 newton meters, 186 lbfd, of the Mazda 3G25, and you can feel this extra poke, although the differences are only slight. Unfortunately, the engine doesn't sound as nice as the one in the Mazda. It makes quite an unpleasant racket at high revs. The car also experiences a lot of torque steer, which is strange given it doesn't have that much power for a front-wheel drive car. If you pin the throttle with the steering will turn even slightly, the ladder will tug, and the inside tire will start to lose traction. Fortunately, the i30 sedan inline is impressively frugal. Hyundai claims it sips 6.6L slash 100km, 35.6 US MPG, over the combined cycle and on long highway jaunts, that's exactly what we average with 98 octane fuel. On the same roads, but filled with 95 octane fuel, consumption increased to 6.9L slash 100km, 34 US MPG. We also experimented with 91 octane fuel over the same highway roads and averaged 7.2L slash 100km, 32.6 US MPG. Hyundai has done an excellent job with tuning the car's suspension. It remains soft and compliant along the roughest road surfaces and the Goodyear Eagle F1 asymmetric two tires of our test car also provided a huge amount of grip. During our time with the car, we embarked on a near 1. 400 km, 870 mile, round trip from Victoria into New South Wales and back, allowing us to test it along heaps of different roads at different speeds. Urban driving is ace. While the inline doesn't offer the same kind of performance as a legitimate hot hatch, it still has plenty of get up and go. The steering is well weighted and provides solid feel. The 7 speed dual clutch also shifts through the gears quickly and smoothly, although it can feel a little unrefined at slower speeds. On the highway, the i30 sedan remains composed and comfortable during long stints. It comes standard with the Hyundai Smart Sense system, which includes lane keeping assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, and, most importantly, active cruise control with a stop and go functionality. The active cruise control system is easy to use, and the lane keeping assist keeps the i30 perfectly centered in the lane. Interestingly, the flagship i30 sedan N misses out on active cruise control because of the option of a six-speed manual. Verdict. The closest rival to the i30 sedan that we've driven in recent months is the Mazda 3 sedan. It starts at 32,990 Australian dollars, dollar 22, 000, and tops out at 47,147 Australian dollars, 31,386 dollars, making it slightly more expensive than the Hyundai. The Mazda cabin feels nicer, but of the two, the i30 sedan is the more exciting to drive, particularly in inline guys. Buyers would be wise to test out both to see which they prefer.